Although Trinity doesn't absolutely require it, strand-specific RNA-seq is the preferred substrate for transcriptome assembly. Computationally, there are fewer confounding graph structures, since the forward camers and reverse complement camers are treated as distinct. Biologically, it's important because it allows for the separation of sense and antisense transcription. Our group at the Broad performed a study of the various methods for generating strand-specific RNA-seq, and we found that the DUTP second strand marking protocol to be the leading method. We routinely generate strand-specific RNA-seq as our default protocol at the Broad, and there are now kits available that make the approach readily accessible. Depending on the protocol used for generating strand-specific RNA-seq data, the reads should end up with a specific orientation with respect to the sense strand of your expressed transcript sequence. For example, paired end sequencing generates two reads for each RNA-seq fragment. Read 1 could be sequenced in either the sense or anti-sense direction. In this case, Trinity needs to know which orientation it corresponds to so that it can reconstruct transcripts according to the sense strand of the transcript. Our favored approach for strand-specific RNA-seq generates fragment sequences such that read 1 matches the reverse complement and read 2 matches the sense strand. This corresponds to what we call the RF library type, with the R indicating the first read must be reverse complemented by Trinity and the F indicating that read 2 is already in the forward or sense strand orientation. We indicate this to Trinity on the command line by using the sslib type parameter and specifying the RF as the value. Strand-specific RNA-seq is tremendously useful when applied to organisms that have compact genomes. Here's an example from Schizosaccharomyces pombae, or fission yeast, where we have two known genes that are transcribed in opposite strands and point towards each other. We have strand-specific RNA-seq data and the coverage plots shown for each. From the coverage plots, you can see that there's overlap in the coverage in the UTR regions, the untranslated regions, shown in the center. And if we didn't have strand-specific data, then we'd reconstruct a single transcript that covers both genes. Because we have strand-specific data, Trinity is able to separately reconstruct these transcripts, allowing for overlap among the UTRs. Here's another example in fission yeast that highlights the importance of strand-specific RNA-seq. This region of the genome encodes three genes that are all encoded on the same strand. From the RNA-seq coverage plots, we can see that the two genes on the end are transcribed on their coding strand, but the central gene encoding a meiosis-specific protein kinase is dominated by transcription on the opposite strand. This antisense transcription is thought to play an important role in the regulation of meiotic genes and fission yeast, and would have gone unnoticed if we hadn't used strand-specific RNA-seq.